going forward imagine imagine a world where smart devices could be controlled without the internet let's not imagine it let's actually see how jason is building smart devices using inexpensive commonly available hardware that is managed with on premise and it and thus eliminating the need for an internet connection to run your smart home jason the floor is all yours thanks a lot arsho uh so yeah i uh i've been playing around as i tend to do with uh various bits of hardware and seeing what we can do with uh any then when we combine them all together um it's actually started out in rather an odd way my uh, younger daughter was uh having difficulty falling asleep and uh like every good nerd i saw this as an opportunity to build something so i uh pulled out uh, uh, one of my Raspberry Pis and hooked it up to a speaker and uh, had, you know, in a couple of days built a nice little player for her uh, podcasts that uh, didn't uh, didn't require her to actually have to set it all up. I could manage it all remotely from my phone. But she found that at night, if she fell, fell asleep, um, she would have missed part of the podcast and wouldn't be able to uh, listen to it and go back. So she asked if I could figure out a way to roll it all back. And, you know, I was digging into it and found, well, sure enough, this um, application has a uh, API built into it. So I thought, great, I can control it with any then, but I didn't want to give her a whole computer or even a phone to have to work with. So I pulled out a wonderful little device and this is called, I don't know how well you can see this or not, so this is an ESP32 microcontroller. They're relatively inexpensive. You can find them often on places like AliExpress for between five and $8. And this is a full-blown computer system. It has Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. Um, it has uh, memory, storage, you name it. It's got all kinds of abilities to built into it. I thought, hmm, that's kind of fun. What can we do with that? So I actually built a little uh, switch into it and threw in a, uh, a, a nice little Wi-Fi connection and got it to send a request out to N8N, which then would go and it would turn on the, the, her player or depending upon how she touched the button, it could roll it back and then it automatically set it to turn off after an hour. I thought, well, if we can do that, what else can we do? So um, I started playing around and looking at this and realized, well, this is all this stuff that we're talking about with IoT, the Internet of Things. And I just built out, by, almost by accident, a couple of Internet of Things devices that did not require me to have Internet connectivity. So I took the Internet out of the Internet of Things. So when you have devices commonly like this, like you, we all, I'm sure, have one of these sitting at home, the plug that you go and you plug into the side of the wall and you fire up your phone and you often have a QR code on it somewhere or, or there'll be an ID code on the back that you would scan with an app and it asks you to do, you know, get, uh, create an account, give out your favorite password that you use for all your other accounts and give, give them access to basically control hardware within your your home. Um, not overly excited about random people from random uh, countries entering my home and doing random things. So with some of the devices that I've been playing with now, you don't have to do that anymore. So I'm going to flip over. I'm going to try to flip over to a different camera here. We'll see if this works or not. It, it's got about a 50% success rate. And so I may disappear. Uh, but with any luck, uh, well, that's looking good. There we go. So this is my little device that's set up. It looks, yeah, it looks as scary as it actually is. Um, but this device is now set up to completely run and control um, NADN. Um, this button here gives me the ability to actually fire off an API call that NEN can pick up with um, the webhook. And there is, 
you can see a red light here, and beside it, there is a blue light that you can't see yet. And that is actually can be responded to by NADN. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you just a little workflow that I've set up that actually will run. Actually, I'm going to use this one instead. And uh, hopefully you can see my see the screen. So we've got this workflow set up. Here's the webhook I promised you. And so I'm going to give you guys a bit of a challenge. If you can somehow still see my camera where you can see the, the my, my device and keep an eye on my on the uh, uh, web or workflow that I'm sharing out, they kind of have to work together. So we'll see if this works or not. If it doesn't, we'll try something else. But all I'm going to do is I'm just going to execute the workflow. And as you can see, it's waiting. It's a typical workflow that's waiting. If you can see, I'm going to touch the button. When I press the button, it's going to fire off the workflow. And now you see well, we've got this loop going here. I've got an on and an off loop. So if you take a look back at my, at my camera, you will see that there is a blue button that's, that's cycling on and off in time with the workflow. It's not that complex. It seems like a complicated thing. This was about, I'd say I, I put in, you know, a couple hours a day for about a week to set all this up. And it, it's very, like, relatively simple to work with. So this is kind of my proof of concept. Um, and of course, I'm never satisfied with just a proof of concept. So I've got a roadmap built out of things I want to do. So I'm going to actually change uh, sharing my screen here. And I'm going to flip over to uh, another screen. And on that screen, uh, there we go. So this is the web interface that I'm actually building into that lovely little uh, ESP32 chip that you were uh, looking at. Um, it's not, it's got work that, uh, that needs to be done on it yet. There's still quite a bit to go, but so far I've got it set up where it, it'll pull up the uh, system info. So this is again, running from a web server built into that chip. There's no other web servers. This isn't on the internet. This is completely built into that chip. And with that web server, it will um, it, it'll do API calls out and API calls in. So you can send and receive stuff and, and it's still doing it. You'll see the chip is still going back and forth. Um, you can also see on the screen I've got, so here's your networking info. This is all pulled in real time. So when I re restart the chip and it takes about four seconds for the chip to restart, um, it'll pull all that information in. You can then go in and modify your networking information include changing your host name, changing your SSID, um, your NADN information, so you can change with the address in here. You can tell it you want to go to your test or your production environment, so it will change your webhook URL. Just, uh, it'll add the test piece onto it automatically. Um, and then the GPIOs, so those are the, the, all the pins on the chip so that you can talk to them. Uh, this is the piece I'm still working on, but I, I'm going to have the ability to be able to pick and choose any one of the pins, control it, and then give it an API endpoint. So either it will, if it's an input node, it will actually create the API endpoint automatically on the chip so that NN can talk to it. Or if it's an output node, um, it will actually con uh, connect to NN from that API. So this is a little bit I, I, I've got, I have to go yet. Um, I also want to add in a couple more things. So for example, if uh, the first time you boot it, it doesn't see um, the Wi-Fi information, it'll actually go into a host node. So it'll create its own um, uh, Wi-Fi network and you'll be able to connect to it and then do the pre-configuration again, without any internet con connectivity. And it'll, it'll be able to fire that up. And I've also got, and I don't know how well you can, it's hard to see even on the camera, this little device here, so that's actually a screen. So it's, it's about a two centimeter screen. And on there is a dynamically created QR code that if you take your smartphone and you were to 
course, I don't have it queued up because why would I have it queued up? That wouldn't make any sense. And here we go. Uh, if you take your, your favorite barcode scanner and put it over it, it'll read the QR code. And I don't know if you can see that or not, take it straight into the web interface without even having to punch anything in. So those are the toys I've been playing around with. The things, um, I, I still have plans to write all this up and I wanna make a nice little package for it. And when I do get it all done and written up, um, I'll make it all available on my website and you guys will be able to pull this down and build your own if you want and uh, play around with it and do all kinds of fun things. Because the wonderful thing about this now is this is the, kind of the core, it's just the base, but I can start adding in other things, you know, like for example, I can add in a uh, sonar so that it could detect distance and learn how to follow things. I can put in a high voltage relay, which will allow it to literally turn on any high, high voltage device. Um, we can start playing around with servos. Servos will let us uh, physically control things. So we're looking at robotic arms. We can start creating and controlling different physical devices that way. Um, you can, you know, work with it within your home. You can turn it into with a temperature sensor, turn it into a thermostat that can control different different devices, control your furnace, whichever you, you like. Um, IR receiver is really good because you can actually uh, could then take this and hijack signals from your remote control. And when you go to turn your TV on with remote control, maybe it'll actually catch it and then with end to end turn down the lights. So there's possibilities with that. Um, you know, we've got, you know, <laughs> You're a flame control uh, module, so you can control your gas fireplace. It's really quite endless as to what you can do with, with some of this stuff now that we've kind of got this interface out into the rest of the physical world. And with that, I'm going to uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to flip over to my normal camera because everybody needs to be reminded that it is Friday and that's why I'm wearing my Friday shirt. And I'll uh, pass it back over to you, Herschel. Wow. Okay. I'm just still processing all the stuff that I saw. And this was amazing, Jason. Thank you for sharing it. I'm like, the possibilities are kind of endless now. And I'm sorry, folks, for asking for recommendations on TV shows and movies. I think I know what I'm going to do this weekend. Uh, but but let's move forward and uh, move forward because I see a lot of questions coming and a lot of people are now excited about the ideas that you said, Jason. So we have a lot of questions coming in. 